You are watching WBS TV. The 2013 2014 budget at a glance. We're looking at it this morning. Is it going to work for the country? Did you expect a lot that you never saw yesterday? With us this morning, we have uh, someone from the traders' uh, site, uh, Isa Sechito, spokesperson of Casita. A very good morning to you, sir. Morning, everybody. Morning, viewers. And thank you very much for coming. No, thank you. Uh, too. From the political side, we have the leader of opposition in parliament, Nathan Nandala Mafavi. A very good morning, you, sir. Good morning. Uh, good morning, listeners. Mm. Uh, we are thanking you very much for having made it in time uh, to be part of this day. Yesterday, I don't know whether you were all uh, part of uh, the budget reading. At least I didn't see you dozing. Uh, I saw others who, <laughs> who are dozing. But let, let me begin off from No, the but I think uh, you have never seen me dozing. Dozing? Have, have you? you doze from your car? No, I, I, I only doze after 2 a.m. Always after a lot. 2 a.m. Oh. <laughs> uh, on my bed. How, how would I know that you doze in your car? Yeah. No, I never even doze in my car. So oh. for those who doze, know why they doze. Mm. Mm. They have so many things they're thinking about in their heads. But let me begin off with uh, Casita for the traders. Yes. You saw the budget yesterday. Uh, you followed it closely. Mm. Uh, to you, you know, did, did you see any great news <coughs> from a trader out there that you don't feel excited about? Uh, I don't know what you call great. Mm. Because if I was to go by the figures, I saw great news mm. by uh, thinking that we can sustain our budget domestically by 81.1%. Uh, what big news if it were to be realistic. Uh, I, I, I also was surprised that uh, one of the positive things that I saw that by May this year, uh, the inflation rate was 3.6%. <coughs> this is so encouraging. If, he, if, uh, if only the minister did not add that uh, for this year, 2013-2014, it's going to be 6.1%. Economists and business operators need to look at the reasons as to why between now, May or June, it is 36 and very soon during this financial year, it's going to be 6.1% inflation. Mm -hmm. There are issues that we must know and get prepared for them. We, we, we also, as the business community, uh, were shocked when on, on top of all issues that were increased, we wouldn't mind much about the spirits, uh, not much about the cigars, not much about the uh, registration for motor vehicle or motorcycles because it is a one-off transaction. But uh, all that loses its economic meaning if you turn around and uh, put add excise duty on fuel. Mm. I'll tell you that... Uh, uh, fuel has a complementary demand effect. Mm. When you touch it, it automatically will have touched every sector. So mm. it is different to mention these other taxes that are specific, where you have said spirits 70 to 140 excise duty, but you have mentioned a non mentioned figure the moment you increased the, the taxes on fuel. Taxes. Because for all domestic and international trade, mm. fuel is the key factor. Mm -hmm. When you are transporting a container from uh, Mombasa to Kampala, it is interesting and uh, very sad to learn that uh, the cost of a container from Spain to Mombasa is the same as the cost from Mombasa to Kampala. Uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. just because of the mode of transport and uh, the, the, the price of fuel. So this means that uh, when you increase, uh, Ugandans must know that uh, fuel is a perception of or rather attitudinal product. The industry cannot be easily controlled because it is an oligopolistic kind of competition. Mm. The operators in there decide what to do the following day. Mm. So if tomorrow they all rose up to say the prices of fuel have been increased, the taxes have been increased, so we are also increasing the price. Yes, what yeah. government would counter that with would be opening the reserves to compete with these operators who mm. are in the oligopolistic kind of competition and then the prices would come down. Mm. And now that the government does not have these reserves, then oh, we remain so. at the mass of the operators. Mm. So e e e e at a glance, every Ugandan must now tighten the belt because 
it was particularly mentioned that we are going to sustain, we wish we, we need to sustain the budget by 81.1% domestically, mm. you and me to pay. Mm. Uh, uh, although I found it a bit wanting, when the minister also mentioned the statement that the government will increase external borrowing to scale up essential investments in infrastructure, particularly roads, railways, energy and water production. It is a controversy when you tell me I'm sustaining the Eight budget, domestic budget, <laughs> 1%, yes. and then you say you are going to extensively okay. borrow from the world uh, outside. Mm. So which, we, which is which? Mm. So I, 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 in summary, uh, I will let you know that in the business community, we are yet to see any points of jubilation because the cost of doing business is already high. Uh, and uh, there isn't something that is nearly suggesting that it is going to be lowered mm -hmm. now that you have caught or touched on a sensitive commodity called fuel. fuel. Above all, you even go to the villagers who depend on us, the few working class. Mm -hmm. Who are the ones sustaining the families for petrol? I mean, this um, parking, kerosene. Yes. Two hundred shillings per liter of kerosene is something that uh, uh, needs a courageous person to mention. Given the economic activities in the villages, the people who use this uh, um, kerosene are very poor people with the very little disposable income at the end of the day the owners comes back to the working class you must provide a five letter jerry can to your mother to your grandmother in the village and your income is reduced by the increments across board so uh, i don't see a big point of jubilation for this but we are still analyzing it further you know what the government talked about the youth capital fund People saying that 21 billion has so far been spent, but if you asked where the, these youth are, you can be surprised that they are not there. I'm not, I'm not a youth, but I have been closely following <laughs> this. And the controversy is uh. that while it seems to be a government venture, it is instead a, 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 share, a, a share agreement. Share Banks contribute 50% if it is 1 billion, from the government then government i mean banks also same, contribute yeah. one billion yeah. at the end of the day we are mixing options the bank is main aim is to maximize profits while government wants to employ the youth so which is which so if this program was to be realistic it should have been a government venture where the, where government would get money it knows better where and then it would be something that would be managed by government but now that it goes to the commercial banks for management it means that the corato that the youth do not have the money ends up in the hands of the, the, old, men. Of the mm. old men okay we'll be coming back to you uh, let yes. me first hear from uh, the politician mr nathan under my leader of opposition <coughs> formerly chairperson public accounts committee of parliament as a journalist what I looked at yesterday from the political point of view was that as a country we are suffering before because of a few individuals who took it upon themselves and put us where we are today by embezzling the funds that the donors eventually said we won't give you anymore but again when you look at it the same people are around and they are going to receive the same funds that we have pulled out of the poor in the country that was my opinion from the political point of view as Mr. Double Position, how do you look at this? First of all, uh, I'm in politics by accident. Yeah, you are an accountant <laughs> and an economist an also. Economist, I'm going to mention it. And uh, I have been a civil servant. One, uh, first and foremost, I don't want to discuss this budget using politics. Mm. Mm. I want to discuss this budget using reality, economically. economically. So that you see, I want to thank my brother mm. uh, from from Casita, the spokesperson. He is not supposed to be a spokesperson. I think he should be the people working in the Ministry of Finance. <laughs> he should be the chairman. <laughs> yeah, they should be the one assisting us. Mm. I'll give, uh, he has mentioned fear. The moment you increase fear, you have triggered increment everywhere. Across. Across. And uh, you know, I want to tell you that the people who use more transport are even a villager. Why? That sugar which will come to the village will come on a truck. Mm. And the cost of that sugar for transportation will be passed on the last what? Consume. 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 I want you to understand that. 
Now, you come to paraffin. He has mentioned it well. You see, well, our argument, in fact, we're the one who made the fuel taxes to go off at that time again. Of, of, of paraffin, now I brought it. You know what you call L L L LPG, that is gas. You know the gas, mm. which me and him uses. That one has no tax. But for the villager, <laughs> who, me and my income is higher, his mm. is higher, but the villager whose income is lower is being taxed to use paraffin. Well, um, the, the elite, the, the well to do, are not being taxed for using what? The gas. Gas. I, I hope you understand where I'm mm. coming from. Now, I want to go in 1986. You know the president refers to 1986, which I want to refer to there. I want to put it in context. In 1986, a kilo of meat was 4,000 shillings. Mm. Are you getting it? Mm. If you remove two zeros, it will be 40 shillings. Uh, because you remember 1987, we moved to zeros. Mm. I want to use what a layman uses. Today, a kilo of meat is 8,000. If you put two zeros, that is 800 what? Thousand. Thousand. It means a kilo of meat has gone up 200 times. I'm using a kilo of meat for simplicity. That means everything in Uganda has moved out 200 what? Times. times. Now, if the budget of Uganda at that time, assuming the dollar, I want to, you know, I want to use it in the context. Assuming that time they were using 5 billion, 200 times, times that is how much? Is, is, is only 1,000 billion. Mm. Hope you understand. It would be 1,000 billion. But we are in 10,000 billions. You know, I want to bring it in context so that you understand, so that the president should stop <coughs> talking of 1986 compared to with without putting in what to call real time value of money. Mm. We call it time value of money. Mm. That's why I wanted to say I want to read you from that point. Now, if that's the case, has our life moved up 200 times? You know, he's mentioning a road in Kamuli, uh, Ginger Kamuli. When he came in power, that road was tamaked. It is his government which made it untamaked. From Tororo to Mbale, Mbale to Soroti, those roads were tamaked. What made him not make them, you see the tamaking they are talking about now, it is his government which made those roads get potholes. So why? Because he never had a policy called maintenance. Okay. Are you getting it? Mm. If he knew that they, uh, you see, if in a planning government, a, a real sensible government, if you knew that uh, today this house is for five people, in 10 years, there will be 200 people. You should plan to increase the what? The house. If we knew the population was going up, and we knew that many tra traffic will increase on Bale, Tororo, uh, Tororo, Sorote, up to Nani, we should have even widened the road and made it even better. That's what we call planning. So when he comes and reads that we're using our money to do it, yet the same roads are not being done, I'll tell you an example. From Tororo to Bale, you need three hours, which used to be 30 minutes. From Bale to Soroti, you need four hours, which used to be less than an hour. So you need seven hours to move. Now, if we are on that road, which takes one and a half hours, now you're using seven hours. That means you have lost 5.3 hours. If you had gone to dig, what would you have produced in 5.3 hours? <coughs> so it means President Museveni has made us grow backward instead of going in front because we waste time on the road instead of doing what? Production. I've used the road now. You are watching WBS-TV.